Minister's Island is an historic Canadian island in New Brunswick's Passamaquoddy Bay near the town of St. Andrews. The 280-hectare island stands several hundred metres offshore immediately northeast of the town, and is a geographical novelty, in that it is accessible at low tide by a wide gravel bar suitable for vehicular travel. Ministeris Island became famous in the last decade of the 19th century as the summer home of Sir William Van Horn, the president of the Canadian Pacific Railway. By the time of Van Horn's arrest death in 1915, the island had been transformed into a small Zanadu, sporting a sandstone mansion furnished in the most lavish late Edwardian manner, manicured grounds, scenic roads, greenhouses turning out exotic fruits and vegetables, as well as a breeding farm producing prize-winning Clydesdale horses and Dutch belted cattle. It was the most spectacular of many palatial summer homes in St. Andrews, which since the creation of the St. Andrews Land Company in 1888, and the arrival of Van Horn in 1891, had become a watering place of note on the Canadian East Coast. Consquam Cook or Quanus Cum Cook Island had been inhabited by Passamaquoddy Indians centuries earlier, traces of their occupation evidenced by the presence of shell middens. Today the Minister's Island Pre-Columbian shell middens are designated as a national historic site and commemorated by Ken. The island did not see white residents until the arrival in 1777 of John Hansen and Ephraim Young. Traces of early European buildings, were excavated in the 1970s. Having received location tickets in recognition of their service in the Revolutionary War, Hansen and Young set out from Salem, Massachusetts in a whaling boat, and eventually found their way to St. Andrews, the first loyalists to arrive in the area. At that time St. Andrews consisted of little more than a trading post operated by two trappers from St. John, along with a mainly ceremonial native presence. Having decided to settle on Consquam Cook Island, they cleared fields, raised families, and for a few tough years were forced to subsist almost entirely on shellfish, and what they could bring down with their guns. With the arrival of the main United Empire loyalist in flux to the area in 1783, there was some concern that they might be ousted from their island by the new settlers so they petitioned Governor-General Carleton in Halifax for title to the island, but were informed that a prior application had been received from Samuel Losburn, captain of the warship Arethusa, then stationed at St. Andrews for protection of the refugees. There is a legend, probably true, that Osborne was forced to use his ship's cannons in some sort of not-so-friendly target practice to persuade the squatters to leave the premises. There is another story that Osborne, in cahoots with the town arrest new rector, Samuel Andrews of Connecticut, got Hanson drunk, and persuaded him to sign over his property to the minister. This is certainly not true, as Hanson and Young had in fact no legal title to the island, and the did transferring the island from Osborne to Andrews, is dated 1791, seven years after the two unfortunate settlers had left the island. Neither Rusburn nor Andrews seemed particularly attached to the island. Though Andrews built a small stone cottage there, still standing today, though in bad repair, he put the property up for sale in 1798, but apparently had no takers, as it was still in his possession upon his death in 1818. After that it passed his son Elisha Andrews, the town arrest sheriff, then to Elisha son Marshall and finally to Marshall's son Edwin. Edwin Andrews and his father Marshall were still living there in 1889, when the celebrated William Van Horn, newly appointed president of the CPR, arrived in St. Andrews on a tour of inspection of the New Brunswick Railway, a new addition to the CPR's rapidly expanding system. Van Horn was impressed with the town and a few years later, in 1891, purchased 150 acres from Edwin Andrews, and began construction of Govenhaven, his summer home 